Welcome. This service is provided by FreeConferenceCall.com. Please enter your meeting ID followed by the pound or hash sign. Please announce yourself. Dave Kelso. Hello, Dave. Hi, Dave. Oh, there's people here already. Cool. Yeah. So there's a nifty feature which is uh, star six. So when I get started talking around seven, if you could um, mute yourself, and then if you want to get back on, if I ask a question or if I direct something towards you, you can star six yourself again, and it'll unmute you. It's pretty nifty. Sure, that's no problem. You yeah. want it? You want to... I'm discovering the capacity of this thing, so I was just letting you know as to the functionalities. You want to know something interesting? What's that? Um, up until uh, synchronicity earlier today, the Linux version of the Skype call recorder would only work with older versions of Linux and, you know, not the newer ones. And everybody was like, well, what the hell? But synchronistically, I just felt impulse to check, and lo and behold... There's a brand new version out, and I installed it, and not only does it work, it's working right now. So I can record the conference. Very cool. Well, I'm recording the conference, too, when it starts. Now, this and is... I'm this... randomly insert racial slurs. Oh, okay. This is considered a public conference, right? Yeah. Okay, so putting it on YouTube, you have no objections to. No, not at all. <clears throat> Just making sure. Yep. This is public as public can be. Okay, dokie. Yep. Yeah. That should be recording right now. Hello. Hello. Paul. Paul's here. Hey, it's Chris. Hey, what's hey, up? Hey, Chris. Man? Hey, Cat. Hey, Chris. Red leader standing hey. by. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you guys are here. Sure, sure. Who else is here? Yeah. Paul is here, Dave's here, Chris is here so far. We're the early bird crowd. Chris who? I already knew that about Chris. There's so many Chris's in been. the world. What, Dave? I said Chris who? There's so many Chris's in the world. His name's Chris Grigassi. He's in the Bees of the Fullest group. Oh, okay. And he also lives in Austin. So <clears> he <throat> has many a pool dates. Well, I am Dave Kelso, the one who does Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy, that documentary series to drive everyone nuts and make everyone's brain implode. <laughs> Hi, Dave. Hello. Cool, cool. Dealing with the New Age Paradigm. <clears throat> oh, Dave. So is there anybody else here other than us, or...? You'll hear a beep, and then, like, a little ding, and then somebody will announce their name when they come on. Ah, okay. I'm expecting quite a few other people, but, you know... because okay, I didn't know if anybody else had gotten here, like, before me and was just being very, very quiet. Nope. You... I started this thing up earlier just to give it a test go and to see if there were any kinks, but nope. And also um, because because I'm on now. because I'm on Skype because I'm on Skype I don't actually need to use the star whatever to mute I can just mute my mic on Skype it does the same thing. <laughs> yeah, that works. The beauty of Skype. Okay. So is this thing running for any particular length of time or just running till it runs? And, I'm yeah. budgeting about two hours. And from there forward, we can kind of figure out what it is that 
everyone's – it really kind of depends on the Q&A section that okay. I'm putting in, so. Just it could go shorter, it could go longer. Shorter, longer, depending on the mood of the conference. Oh, yes, the mood. Ha, 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 ha. I'm putting off starting the recording yet because I know that when people get on, it'll they'll be announcing their name and then they won't know the star six function. Mm -hmm. So I hope you all are good and waiting for a second. Is that fine with you, Chris? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. After you announce your name, please press star six to mute yourself in the conversation. Following that, please press <laughs> star 420 to smoke a big fat doobie. Thank you for using free conference calls. Star 420. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Chris. Pump some fists. Star 20 for life. Welcome to the new Ragers hotline. If you are butthurt, press 1. If you're really butthurt, press 2. If you don't want to press 1 or 2, go meditate. You know, I would start pressing buttons, but I'm not sure if it will have it any back. It might, depending on what you press. <laughs> it might. Yeah, it might. If you would like to meet your <laughs> local police officers and fire department, press 911. <laughs> Thank you for calling 911 Emergency Service. We are experiencing unusually long hold times due to an excessive amount of active crack dealers. Your estimated hold time is six hours. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm figuring that it's for, I'm going to wait till people, till about 7.10 and then we will get started. Good to me. And okay. anybody who misses it can catch it on Paradigm Shift and Education Comedy on YouTube because this call is being recorded. Well, I'm also recording it too, so they can catch it on my stuff as well. Yeah, baby. Mm hmm. Aw, yeah. I'm still waiting for Jay Larson to wake back up. He took a little nap, but I'm, I don't think he woke up from it yet, again yet. And I see Kristen on Facebook, and I'm asking her if she's going to call in yet. Yeah, I have like at least six other people that said that they were coming, so. I, I don't think punctuality is really the artist's way. Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently not. Except for Chris. Well, I, well, Katarina, I was I was going to text you, but then I thought you might be busy. But it sounds like since you're waiting, I'll just tell you what I was going to text you. Uh, okay. I want to thank I want to thank you again for helping Mary and Jessica move forward with that Empower website. Thank you very mm -hmm. very much. You're welcome. Yeah, we we have some more work to do on it, but. It should all right. be ready yeah, I understand, I understand, but it's like it's it's not dying; it's moving forward, and that's I've you know I've experienced lots of things just kind of grind. You know, I don't think you're going to let this die. <laughs> that is not my not my uh what how can I say my track record? No. <laughs> good, good. 
Katarina, can I try uh, conferencing Kristen in and see uh, where she stands on things? I just didn't want to. I just, I, I just didn't want to. I just didn't want to do it um, just out of the blue without everyone prepared. So I'm going to do that now. You're going to hear the phone ring and so on and so on. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, she she said she wanted to come to this today too. So. The mailbox belonging to Kristen is full and cannot accept new messages at this time. To leave a callback number, press 5 or please try again later. Hmm. She seems to be on. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you, robot lady. I've been you were telling her that I just tried to merge her into the conference call, but got her mailbox this full message. She should empty that damn mailbox, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> this is Mark Benny, sir. Hello. Welcome. Hey, there, You've got conference call. <laughs> Who is that? That is Dave. There's a couple of people nice. online. This is an oh, automated Gilbo. voice conference calling troll system. It is designed to troll you <laughs> maximum efficiency. <laughs> yeah, the first time I called, I got, all circuits are busy. Please hang up and try again later. Oh, no. <laughs> the number you have reached, 911, has been disconnected or is no longer in service. Uh, you sound pretty close yeah. to Pat. <laughs> who just got on? <clears throat> ben Rivera. Hermity Frog. Ready. Okay. Hello. Yes. You, oh, oh another go. person. People are starting to pile in now. Cool. Lee Ann Mills. Hello. Hey, it's Katarina's mommy. Hello. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> I've got uh, Heather trying to get on, and I've got Krista driving this direction. And Janavia's trying to get on, and I think what I forwarded them didn't have the phone number, so I just went and forwarded again to them. So. Okay, cool. So uh, now it's about 7.10, so I'm just going to get started. Cause, Sorry. Uh, have, it's, it's all right. So everybody, could you press star six on your phones right now? I'll just mute that. Okay. Like okay. So Paul, are you there? Oh, just a second, everybody. Well, I muted myself. You asked me to mute myself. Oh, well, you're not the one I'm asking to mute because you're my co-host. Oh, hooray. Hooray. So for everybody who doesn't know, this is Paul, my husband, and uh, he is going to be talking with us today about self-worth, and he has a very interesting sharing and story himself, and so that's why I decided to bring him on last minute to uh, allow him to share from you, give you a male perspective on this whole concept of self-worth and how it really manifests itself from the male perspective. So, Paul, would you give them a little bit of an overview of your self-worth story just to start off? Mm, Sure. I guess that uh, I was running from myself, like for my entire life, I was kind of running away. And I realized when I was in my late 20s that I had a serious self-worth issue. I I didn't think that I was worth investing in. I didn't feel as if I personally was 
really worth spending the time to help myself. And there came a point where I became aware that my life was directionless and that my projects weren't getting done. And this po- this point was so important to me because when I started to really examine myself and examine my own feelings, that's when things really started to turn around. Right, right. It's very cool. Well, you know, I know you have more to share, but I would like everybody just for now to just sort of take a comfortable seat. And I know that a lot of you were just rushing to get on this call and you're probably in a little bit of a flurry and a frenzy at the moment. So, I'd like you for you to just sit down for a sec and just really close your eyes and turn your attention inward for a minute because I think this will really help you to absorb what it is that I have to say to you today and and all of the insights that are to come. So close your eyes and really feel into your feet. And just sit for a second and think to yourself, What intention is it that I have for this call today? What is it that I am wanting to get out of this call? And really put that forward to spirit and to the universe for yourself today to really call that energy into you and to to bring your awareness to that area of your life that needs healing and needs some attention from you. Because you know that all I can do is be the reflection for you. It really is your own self-healing journey that I'm going to be walking you through today. And all I can be is the guide on this journey. So I want you to keep your attention inside and place your hand on your heart and feel some compassion for everything that you've been through that has gotten you to this point today where you're reaching out and and looking for some guidance about this topic of self-worth. Because it's a really sensitive topic and it's a really emotional topic and it's a really loaded topic and and there is so much wrapped up in this this really potent topic that, you know, there's so much more to cover than two hours will allow me to, but I really want to set the intention today that we're going to dive in as deep as we can in the short period we have together. And so with that, I, I just want to open the line for a second. The first person, I, I would like you to share with us what your intention is for this call. So first person to unmute themselves, star six. Come on out. I don't bite, I promise. Anybody? Anybody? How about you, Paul? Sure, I'll do it for you. My intention (laughs) for this call is, I mean, I'm already unmuted. So my intention for this call is to learn more about the the actual feelings of low self-worth and how it is that they manifest themselves in Mm -hmm. your own life. I have my own perspective, and I'm interested in learning more because I know that you know a lot more than me. Yeah, cool. Very cool. Now somebody else has to go. I right, up. somebody else has to go. Who's brave enough to, to share their intention for this call? I will cross right. frog here. I'll share my intention. Okay. Oh, is, it, <laughs> is, it, is that Dave? Yeah, it's me. <laughs> All right. You go first, and then I'll go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, for, for me, I'm just kind of observing and relaxing into this call and enjoying it because it's more of a a reflection of what I've already been experiencing because I've been, you know, going through clearing a, a lot of different paradigms of, well, you know, like you were saying, the, the limitation stuff and mainly like based in the, you know, the belief that, okay, well, you know, when you've seen a certain reality reflected for a certain period of time, you start to believe that that's the only real one and that nothing else could possibly happen and other things, you know, start sounding like people are talking about fairy dust and woo-woo. 
And, you know, I've been having a lot of these old belief systems defied, especially when it comes to societal perspectives. And you shared in, like, the biggest one with me not too long ago because you synchronistically popped in on the call when I was with Vinny Eastwood and Max Egan, which are two, you know, heavy hitters within the truth movement and trying to, you know, get people to have more awareness of what's going on in the world and show more compassion and help each other instead of being on this, you know, thing where, oh, I'm I'm a slave to everybody or I need to be someone else's slave or, you know, all these ideas that, you know, you can't do what you enjoy doing. You have to work at Walmart forever and, you know, the whole 99% versus 1% sort of a dichotomy that we're all stuck in and, you know, the idea for most people that, oh, yeah, I can make money on YouTube or, you know, I can make money on TSU mm. or or Empower Network or whatever, any number of things online. So, People are so used to the whole thing. Yeah. So your intention today is just to get some more perspective? Yeah, you can say that. Okay. Who's next? Uh, I guess I'm next. Uh, my name is Perry, and my intentions for this call is to get a better grasp on exactly what I'm entitled to as far as my self-worth goes, whether it be a relationship of a personal nature, a business relationship, and not only stop putting myself into situations where it's easy to tell myself that I will fail because of this, but also to realize that when I do become assertive and start demanding what I'm worth, it's not being selfish. It's mm -hmm. just assessing what I'm worth and, and reaching for it. That's so perfect. So perfect. Thank well, you. I'm so happy you're here. Well, thank you. Yeah. Is anyone else brave enough to tell us what your intentions are today? Yeah, this is Chris. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Chris. Hi. Uh, I'm here to experience Katerina as a facilitator teacher and mm -hmm. see what how she does things, how you do things, and uh, whether I like it or not. <laughs> That's fair, too. <laughs> Perfect. Good. Anyone else? No? Okay. Great. So, first of all, I want everyone to think about this question. What images come to mind when you think of the word self-worth? Just think about that in, for, in your mind for a minute. Like what images actually come to mind when you think about the word self-worth? Are they positive? Are they negative? Do they feel good? Do they not feel so good? How do you react to the word self-worth? Like what emotions do you have towards that word? Does anybody want to share? Yeah, I will. Okay. Um, this is Chris. Um, the feeling I had was kind of, it was um, frustration with others and what came to mind was I'm better than them. Oh, really? Yes. My worth is more than theirs. How do you figure that? I don't figure it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just That's just what I experienced. I, I, I didn't figure it. I see. Well, upon looking at that, where do you think that might have started, the, the idea that your self-worth is more than others versus equal but different? Well, I was mommy's favorite, and mm -hmm. uh, I succeeded and got lots of strokes for succeeding in the you know, typical things like school and you know things where it was really easy to uh, – that's what they wanted you to do was play their game. So I, I was real good at that. And I had a grand a grandmother who just really 
she she filled me with wonderful stories of my heritage and my superiority. I see. Mm-hmm. And so how does that affect how you see yourself today? Well, sometimes I'm impatient with other people. It definitely is just one thing that comes from it. Um, let's see, what else? Um, Um, and I get I have I, I, I at times will have a low a low kind of simmering sense of frustration, um, kind of wanting to just take charge and make something happen. Right, rather, you're frustrated. Let other, let other people fail like they're going to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Chris. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, could, can Katarina? I go next? Uh, oh, please do. Yeah, who's next? I hear Paul, and I think I hear Perry. Who's who's speaking? I, I think uh, I stepped on Paul's foot. I'm I'm sorry. Oh, it's not a problem. Uh, I'm just letting Katarina know that there is somebody who is attempting to unmute themselves. And they're having an issue with star sex. Oh, really? Yeah, I just wanted to let you know because I'm getting a flurry of text messages over here. Well, that is so. the only command I know. Hi there. Just this is Leanne. Phone. Am I in oh, there? You go. Oh, finally. Okay, oh. great. Thank you. Um, wow. I was just um, I as I listened to was it Chris? It was the one just before this. Yes. Um, Chris. Uh, yeah, it was. I just thought to myself, "Wow, how blessed to have had such a kickstart of self worth in such a positive way." And you know, if I'd even had like half of that growing up, how different maybe my world would be at sixty one than it is right now. And mm-hmm. um, you know, and and while you know, hey, it might be a little frustrating having you know being annoyed with people that maybe don't have it together or you know, or this or that. But um, I thought, wow, that's very cool. Because I thought, okay, what does self-worth mean for me? And I know that just um, there's just been so many things going on um, this last week with the awareness that I came away from a session with you, Katerina, that it's kind of like, wow, you know, I didn't realize that self-worth was such a huge thing. Because, you know, when half of yourself is missing because you've shoved a little child, of, you know, the other half of you in a closet all these years and thrown away the key and didn't hear the screams and the yelling, um, you didn't realize that the self-worth was tied up in that child that never has had a chance to kind of, you know, be heard or explored. And so it's no wonder that there was a part missing. So as I'm merging the two together, and now when I think of self-worth, I think of, you know, that, hey, you know, I have, um, I have just as much a right for this or um, all of a sudden, my worth has just gone up exponentially um, in value as I discovered how important it is to feel whole, complete, and perfect, which, um, you know, is putting, you know, the brokenness of yourself together with the adult and being able to go like, okay, now what is really important? What's really missing? And having the courage to be able to look at that. So, mm-hmm. um so all of a sudden, this whole concept of self-worth, which is why I was so excited to see that there was going to be a call about it tonight, um, mm-hmm. because it's a whole new area that I never realized was so empty in mind, you know, with no boundaries, no, you know, everybody else is so much more important than I am, you know, um, just feeling that there isn't, and I realized that that's not like low esteem as being low self-worth, that I had no value in my right. own mind, whereas other people might thought I had, but I didn't believe it. And so their needs and their things were more important than mine to a detriment. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Harry? Well, I, I wrote a couple things down here. Uh, you asked how it makes me feel when I think of self-worth. and so We have images come to mind. Right. Um, I have to say it's a lot of anxiety, mm-hmm. 
because I'm thinking about confrontations I might have with people. I get a lump in my throat. Um, I get upset because people don't acknowledge my self-worth without my demanding or defining it. And on the flip side, I actually get embarrassed when people tell me that I'm great and deserving and need to have more self-worth. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's like a paradox. Right. Interesting. Interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. Because I definitely have identified with that, too. I'd like to shock everybody and answer that in only one sentence. Okay. When I think of self-worth, I think of my journey out of the mindset of everyone else telling me who I'm supposed to be and trying to appease everybody and into the journey of exploring who I actually am and have the right to be. My God, Dave summarized self-worth. Holy crap. (laughs) Thank you for sharing that. And Paul, how about you? Uh, When I think about self-worth, I tend to think about my own journey as it pertains to how I used to be and how self-worth itself is in no way, shape, or form tied to material goods or accomplishments, but rather it's something that is just deep inside of me that is actually the causation and not the correlation. Awesome. Awesome. And Mark and Betty, are you still on the call? I know that you popped on. Do you want to contribute? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yep. What images come to um, mind for you? Um, I guess it's just dealing with the uh, relationship to those closest to me. I feel like I get manipulated a lot and and mm. I know what I want to do, but I feel an obligation to these people close to me to be there for them and I'm then you know the un, everyone's getting what they want and I'm the only one not getting what I want. So I okay. uh, you know that's a big issue with me and I, it's been something that's been you know, I'm the one that everyone can count on all my life and kinda had all the responsibilities thrown on my shoulders. So well, I never right. really had a childhood and or I didn't even get to be to my mom. So it's like so I missed out on a lot of things that, you know, I hear people talking back and uh remembering and I didn't get to to share in those moments. So I feel like I've missed out on a lot. And now mm-hmm. I'm fifty two and I feel very unfulfilled. I see. Thank you for sharing that. Mm-hmm. Unfulfilled is a is a very common one, and that was something that is part of my own experience as well. To be, for me, I was 27 when I when I realized that life was not turning out the way that I wanted it to be, and I didn't know what to do to fix it. Yeah, that's a good point, Paul. Uh, Mark, do you have any contribution? Okay. Which Mark? Which Mark? Hello. Hello, this is Mark Bettinger. Hi. Do you have any contribution? Uh, what images come to mind when you think of the word self-worth? Well, when I first thought about it, I was realizing that for me, I think it's it's fine, striking a balance because there's a dilemma between self-worth and self-will, and and sometimes your feeling of wanting to be fully actualized and and having what you think you are entitled to and you, and you really care about comes at the expense of other people's uh, uh, desires and, and whatever. And so there's always this, this kind of struggle with this. How much of my self-worth do I claim and does it cost anybody else for me to exercise and, and fully believe them? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I realized this is the idea of, I heard someone talking about how they've been fortunate because everyone has given it's worth a child. And to me, I, I kind of felt like that was that was not an authentic kind of thing because self worth really has to become self generated. People mm-hmm. can tell you how great you are all day long, and uh, you can still refuse to believe it. 
will tell me if you believe it, but still, there's there's a fear of believing it. Either it's too good to be true, or if they really knew me, they wouldn't they wouldn't say that. But there's a doubt. I mean, so it becomes a dilemma as to just how much do you do you exercise uh, your 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 will and your and your desires and make them known uh, without without feeling like you're you're asking for more than you, you're entitled to because it's coming out of someone else. They're paying the freight, in other words. Does that make any sense? Hello? Hello, does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, this is my other phone um, had an issue, and then I had to run over and get Paul's phone. Oh, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Like, like, oh, my gosh, what about these other people, like, looking at me and being like, oh, you're so great, but really deep inside you're not really feeling all that great about yourself. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, well, and, and I'm not better than someone else, but on the other hand, we all have, we're entitled to want and believe who we can be. Because right. it really ends up coming coming down to who am I being at that moment, and and that's right. and and that means that you're you're self assured and you're and you're being honest with yourself and you're not settling for for crumbs because you don't right. think you deserve more. But yet sometimes when you when you think you deserve more than that, uh, it might not it, it might be a selfishness that uh, you know is not appropriate. It, it, right. There is a tricky there's a tricky line there between. What your self worth is and, and what's what's actually true. And mm-hmm. there are people who think that they deserve to be king, you know, and that doesn't mean that, they're, <laughs> that, they're, that, they're, that that's justified. Right. I think that that is one of the things that a lot of people that struggle with self worth um, they they think that about themselves. They think that oh well, if I actually have self worth, then that means that I'm going to be selfish, and that that means that I'm going to be vain and conceited, and I'm going to demand more of everybody if I'm feeling like I'm worth something. But instead, you know, they they end up being everybody's doormat, and you know, everybody's walking on them. You hit the floor. Really <laughs> what did you say? You hit the head. It's, it's Can somebody, um, I think somebody in the background is also unmuted, so whoever is not Mark, can you mute yourself, please? Star six. What I'm thinking is, is there is a fluctuation. At one moment, you really do feel like you're fully worth whatever you believe yourself to be worth. But the next minute, you go, wait a minute, that's, that's, being, that's being unrealistic or that's being... Um, excessive or uh, am I hurting, uh, am I taking more than I've given or any number of other paradigms that you could look at and so you back off and in doing that you go back to feeling small again. Mm -hmm. Right. And so really, I mean, all of you are very familiar with this concept of self-worth and you all recognize that you have some issue with it. And I, this call today, my intention with it is really to talk about how to deal with these moments of fluctuation in our self-worth and how we can stay buoyant, stay resilient through them. So thank you, Mark. And um, I, is it all right if I move on, or do you have anything else you want to say? Okay, I think he muted himself. So, all right. Um, so isn't it kind of interesting, everyone, how many different notions come from just one word? Like, self-worth evoked so many different ideas in all of you, and you all shared your very different perspectives. I mean, you have Chris over here on one end that's thinking that it's almost like an arrogance, and then everybody else is like, wow, I don't really have any of this word. So I just think it's fascinating. And, you know, it's no secret that you're here today because you're wanting to know how self-worth will be a game changer for you and how it can transform your life when you learn to embrace it. Um, But before we jump into it, we're going to lay a bit of groundwork so you can have a proper frame of reference to hear this information so you can best apply it in your life. So um, bear with me. If you know some of this stuff already, great. Repetition is the key to understanding. So I want to start first with the question of why start with self-worth. 
uh, all of us have these really deep desires around being happy, fulfilled, feeling purposeful, motivated, and like totally in love with your life, right? And, you know, we try as we might to improve ourselves and to learn the latest healing modality or to try the latest diet or to seek, you know, the new relationship, yet most of us still feel really empty. And we spend our time trying to fill that emptiness. Like, Betty, you were talking about feeling unfulfilled. Um, It's no secret that this modern culture doesn't really show us how to have healthy respect for ourselves. And, you know, how many of you are inundated with images in the media and diet ads and fast food commercials and ideal perfect lives? you know, better homes and gardens and, you know, have a perfect relationship and blah, 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 blah. And so you just feel so inadequate and, like, you can't measure up. You look to the outside and you still feel this sinking feeling of, like, wow, if they only knew how horrible I was on the inside, they wouldn't even talk to me. You know, and we go around and live our lives this way and we experience the world through this lens. So, did you know that a lot of that is created to, sen- to to create a sense of lack in wanting in us? You know, advertisements, they do that in order to make us buy more stuff in order to f- fulfill this hole in our lives. You know, a lot of probably have more stuff in our house than we really yeah. want. And uh, a lot of us have you know, more weight on us than we want and more food in our fridge that, you know, we just, we have this idea that, you know, more equals better and we fill up our lives with more stuff in order to try to avoid this feeling inside. And we try to rise above those feelings, yet there's still something pulling at us in the background and it tells us that we aren't good enough and we don't have enough and that we have to be more, do more, or, or say more, or, you know, just, become more. And at the end of the day, we sit down with ourselves and feel tired, beat down, and just unfulfilled. So all of the aspects of our lives suffer. Our relationships, our health, our wellness, uh, our, our state of mind really suffers. So how many of you know what I'm talking about or, you know, have tried to do this stuffing and, uh, you know, mm-hmm. creating distraction for yourself in your life like can can anybody share about that i know all about it it's leanne hi hi um i think that's kind of what i was talking about by you know having that little child i for lack of a better word um shoved in a corner is just that idea of stuffing and that idea of that i don't deserve it and um and just um, covering the pain uh, without ever really um, getting to the bottom of it and just kind of mm-hmm. like putting a Band-Aid on it or reframing it, and it's kind of like a scab, but the wound is still there that's never been permitted to heal till now. So, Wow. Yeah. And how many else? Have you, how many other people know what I'm talking about? Anybody else? Have you tried to do this at some point in your life? Oh, this is Mark again. You, you were talking, your first question was about having more and more stuff, thinking that will make me happy. And when I get my new car, that will make me happy. And when I have more of this, that adds to who I am, which is totally BS. Unfortunately, it's, it's, it's only a later in your life when you realize all the stuff you're buried in, you're the prisoner of it. And it's only when, for me, when I experienced being in a place where they had none of that, and they were more wealthy emotionally than I could ever hope to be. And I realized I didn't miss any of that stuff. And I went, wow, what kind of cul-de-sac was this? You know, what kind mm-hmm. of delusion was this that this was going to add to my to my joy? When, in fact, having none of it and just seeing them living in the moment, being joyful just because they're the source of their joy. They're not dependent on outside objects giving them joy because that's not possible. I mean, one million doesn't satisfy you. Five million won't get you there. I mean, there are people that have those problems, and they're not joyful. And that, to me, was the whole benefit of, of, of recognizing your self-worth is that you're, you're entitled to be the source of joy to the world, not to be the recipient yeah. of joy given to you. I think the drive... Sorry, this is Dave. I think the drive to fit in 
is the core of that problem too because it's not just about getting getting stuff that's one aspect of it but why are we getting stuff to try to fit in we think we're going to fit into society if we get that stuff and then once we fit in we'll finally be happy but it's not about just fitting in it's about it's about appeasing what what parents want what friends want what the corporate world wants fitting into the newest trends and fads and it's all a big, you know, cluster frack of everybody telling you who you're supposed to be and that that'll make you happy and none of it makes you happy. It just perpetually makes you feel like dog poo. Right. Thanks, Dave. Dog um, poop. This is Leanne again. Um, one of the things that I I thought was really interesting was, um, and I, I heard somebody talking about it and they were saying uh, something to the effect of, with the self-worth, um, you know, that if it's not from within, um, then if, you know, you can have all these people telling you you're so wonderful, but if, if you don't have that barometer within you to know where your self-worth is and that you have it, then all it takes is that one person, and it doesn't even matter who it is, it, it, you know, like who is that person anyway, to sit there and to say that you are dog poop. And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, yeah, then all of the terrible things that might, you might have heard maybe once or twice over your life, forget all of the wonderful things, you will now believe that and, and be attracted to that to think that, see, you know what, I knew somebody would get it and that they would figure out that I'm a phony when, when that's not the case at all because there's no internal barometer that you've ever had to say, you know, who's that person? You know, you'll see people that have that confidence or they'll have that self-worth now I understand what that means, the self-worth, the, the value of your own self as you see it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So we do all this improvement on ourselves, and we, we you know buy the house, we buy the car, we buy everything, while simultaneously thinking that we're broken and defective, even though we may be eating right or not, exercising or not, meditating or not, and all we feel is like we aren't doing enough and there's something wrong with us. And if we are doing something or if we aren't doing something, we feel like we're useless or lazy or like crap, you know? And through all of this, we're discontented, disconnected and totally exhausted because this, this drive to do something, be something, you know, fulfill something is just a horrible hamster wheel that we all end up finding ourselves on at one point or another, you know, trying to do more for people in order to get the pats on the head. We try to become more so we can be praised in someone's eyes. And when we become aware of how our current way of being is really affecting the quality of our life, we we desire to change. You know, perhaps things in your life aren't going the way that you want them to, and perhaps you aren't having the kind of love that you want, the kind of work that you want, the kind of accomplishments or achievements you want, and you're not taking the leap of faith you want. Whatever it is, it all comes back to the way that we see ourselves and how much we value what we see. Uh, this just came to mind. Um, how many of you have heard of doing mirror work, you know, looking in the mirror? Leanne, I know that you have, so I'm just curious as to everybody else. Nobody? Well, I know Paul has. Hello, it's Chris. I've heard Chris? of it. Okay. Uh, did you say mirror work? Yeah, yeah, looking at yourself in the mirror and, and doing work in the mirror. Well, yeah, I do the, uh, the thing that Louise Hay recommends is just tell yourself, you know, name yourself and say you love yourself every morning. Mm. And, I, I, you know, I also say that while while I'm doing that, I also say, if whoever else comes to mind, that I love them too. I I, I do it for others as well as for myself. And um, I like doing that every morning. Now, for some of you, I know that that might sound a little hokey, but what Chris is saying, I know Chris personally, and I know that that actually really works for him. But... I know that myself personally, I've struggled with doing mirror work like that because it's really painful to look in the mirror. Yeah, no. it, it's really painful to look in the mirror and to see yourself as something that 
you're unhappy with and to say I love you to that self. You know, if you're feeling as unworthy as most of you are, <clears throat> it's really difficult to muster up enough I love you inside of you directed at yourself in the mirror. Um, Leanne, do you want to share your experience? I, I know that uh, that was one of your assignments that I gave you the other week, and you had a really profound breakthrough that I think would be really useful for everyone, if you could share that. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it was um, – at first, uh, when she said it, it was kind of like, okay, I really need to do this, you know. Um, and uh, when I sat there and the first thought that came to my mind, there was nobody home, um, was the fact that, you know, like, hey, it's really cold standing here, you know, with, with no clothes on and looking in the mirror. And, um, and it was kind of like, but I've got to focus on my eyes. I've got to look in my eyes. And, um, and, you know, I'd be looking and I kind of, my, my mind would be kind of wandering and I'd be kind of seeing the peripheral and kind of seeing behind me through the mirror, you know, what was on the window. And I had to keep coming back. And then the moment that it connected, when I really looked deep into my eyes, it was like, oh, my goodness, there's a sadness there. And it was like, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, you know, actually, they're kind of glossied over. And it almost looks like I'm going to cry. And it's like, but I'm not sad. There's no reason for me to be crying. And it was weird. And I was thinking, oh, but at least there's no circles under my eyes. And I was thinking, you know, thoughts like that and kept trying to refocus back on my eyes. But that was so interesting that I could see a sadness. And then I kind of let my eyes drop down a little bit. And I thought, gosh, and even with just looking with no expression on my face, my face is kind of frowning. And I thought, wow, that's really a shocker. Everybody thinks of me as being so perky, you know, and that kind of thing. But then when I really got real with myself and I kept going back to my eyes, it was this glossiness over my eyes and almost this cheeriness. And I wasn't having any emotion. And I thought, wow, that was really something. And I realize now that was the little girl inside me knocking on the door, pounding on the door, screaming, saying, you know, look, let me out. You shoved me back in there when I was such a little girl, you know, just to kind of hide from all the fear and all the pain and all the hurt. You know, back when you were 8, 9, 10, I don't need to be here anymore. And all of a sudden, when I, when I actually kind of had that breakthrough, it was like, oh, my goodness. And it was just huge. And, and I've just been on fire all week long. I mean, I literally, you know, was just up all night. My house is spotless. There's not one piece of paper in my, my living area. My house is all organized and in my office. I've never done that. And anybody who knows me knows that. I mean, even Betty, who lived here a week, and certainly my brother. But, I mean, that was huge. But it was so happy having that, that awareness to kind of unlock that door because I, it was almost kind of like I've heard that expression that our eyes are the pathway to our soul. And I thought, you know, I know the nuns are always saying, oh, I just love your smile. I love your eyes. But I never looked at my eyes to see that pain and that, that, that child that was crying out inside me. And so I really, really encourage any of you to look inside and see what child or what what pain is, is that you have shoved under that carpet? Because that's where it lies. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, I know she had such a powerful transformation, and I gave her this assignment of, you know, um, is it okay if I share with them what you came to me for? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, hmm. She had been struggling with her body image for a long time, and um, – she came to me and was asking me, actually demanding, could I help her? <laughs> and so I gave her this assignment of, um, among, you know, actually working with her beliefs, I gave her this assignment of looking into the mirror for at least five minutes every day for a week and really focusing on her eyes one day. And then the next day she was focusing on another area of herself that she wasn't happy with. You know, um, you know, women have our quote unquote trouble spots, right. You know, society likes to call it, but um, what she experienced was such a profound transformation in her relationship with herself. And she was actually experiencing such tenderness towards 
the flesh that she saw in the mirror and it, it, it really transformed the way that she related to herself because previously she had avoided mirrors and avoided actually looking at herself as a way of hiding from herself. So that is something that I would encourage all of you to try and to really acknowledge the person that is in the mirror because if you are feeling these feelings of low self-worth and shame and and guilt, you know, the only person that you need to be intimate with, first of all, is yourself. And if you can't even be intimate with yourself, how can you expect to have healthy relationship with other people and, and, and healthy communion with other people? So thank you so much for sharing that, Leanne. You're welcome. And one other thing that was really interesting is that as I've I've done this exercise each day, it was interesting that like when I I did my five one day, the first thought that came to my mind was um, in an unguarded moment, my very, very slender, and I love her dearly, my beloved mother who's passed, um, I remember her commenting on my thunder thighs. And it was, you know, um, it was the idea that, you know, she wanted so desperately for this you know, 18, 19 year old daughter to not be, you know, 240 pounds or 230 pounds or whatever, but to be, you know, the 120 pounds that she was. Um, Mm -hmm. And so she was embarrassed and she was, you know, she wanted for me what she had, but she didn't have the tools to do it in a way that didn't add more damage. And so it's interesting that all those years I saw my legs as thunder thighs. Well, here I've lost the 70 pounds and my thighs are actually really beautiful But I had always never looked at them to see the reality that, wow, they are not that big. They have, they are healthy. And, you know, or my neck gobble gobble that my mother-in-law commented on that, wow, it's not that bad when I look in pictures where there are people with five chins, you know. And so Mm -hmm. I was more gentle with myself to realize that the stories that we have taken from each and every kind of an area of your body or something, if somebody had commented like, oh, you've got arms with wings underneath it or anything like this, or you're flat or you're heavy or you're big or you're whatever, that those kind of damages, um, they, those, if oh. you don't have a good healthy self-worth, then you'll sit there and, um, and carry them with you until you get rid of them through this exercise. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that extended description because that's really important too. Can I, um, uh, yes. Um, may I briefly share something that helps me? Yes, yes, please. One thing that helps me, and this is going to seem counterintuitive at first, but bear with me, is when I'm in a really horrible self-defeating mood, I just tell myself that it's okay that I am and I have the right to be. And upon doing that, I feel much better. And I notice that the main thing that's causing the mood is my observation of the mood. And then the societal programming kicks in and says, oh, you're not supposed to be in a bad mood. You're supposed to be happy all the time. Psychiatrists say you have to be happy. Society says that if you're not happy, there's something wrong with you. You're mentally disturbed. You have a disorder. You're you're flawed. You're a failure. You're this, you're that. If you're not always happy, then, you know, and then you got religion and new age and all this stuff. And, oh, you, you always have to be happy. So but, but I noticed that before I would be looking at my bad mood and feeling guilty and and helpless about it, like, oh, I want to be in these really good moods, but I'm not. I'm in this bad mood. So I'm in this bad mood, so that means I'm a failure and I'm hopeless and I'm horrible, which only amplified the mood, just like, you know, your mom was talking about, you know, the amplification effect that things can have on you and how your mom was talking about once you finally come to a place of, of peace about yourself, you realize that most of the stress was really coming from your own view of yourself and once I was able to lighten up on myself my choices were wiser my attitude was more calm and with a calm attitude is a calm central nervous system which isn't sending your biology into total imbalance and sickness I know you could speak to that Katerina with your sicknesses you've had so I've been healthier and happier by allowing myself to be in a horrible mood and knowing that it is a storm that will pass 
and the storm only amplifies and lasts forever if I keep raging against it and saying, oh, I'm such a failure for being in this mood. No, I'm not. It's a mood. It'll pass. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Because, yeah, that is really one of the key tenets of what it is that I'm talking about here, too. Thanks for prompting that, Dave. Um, With self-worth, People think that if you have a whole abundance of self-worth, you're never going to feel any negative moods ever, ever again. And I want to say woe to those who think that because it's really, that's not the point. The point is that there's an ebb and flow in life and that there's waves and that there is a continuum, a spectrum, if you will, of emotions that we humans can experience on a daily basis. And when we are in this, these modes and these moods, the 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 appropriate response is to allow the feelings to, to pass through you. I mean, there's a whole complex structure of belief. Like there's this whole network of beliefs that support the emotions that you're having, and and that's something that I'm going to bring up later. But um, mainly, it's not your fault. It's not your fault that you have these emotions that you know you're angry one moment, and you're depressed one moment. It's it's really okay. And I think that there's a lot of misunderstanding about this notion of of happiness in this culture because we are told, you know, you just need to reframe, you need to think positive thoughts, you need to, you know, be happy because being happy is, you know, your salvation, basically. That's that's what people tell us. And and I'm gonna tell you that there is value in depression, there is value in anxiety, there's value in sadness even. And so when you are honoring yourself and really exploring this concept of self-worth, I think the biggest thing for people is to, to really get is the fact that there's value in all of your experiences. And when you allow yourself to experience the sadness and experience the anger and experience the frustration, it passes much quicker, like a child's temper tantrums, you know? the child's temper tantrum can turn into sadness if they stymie it and they stifle it. And so when we don't listen to those feelings and we try to shove them away with, with alcoholic beverages or, or sugar or, or other forms of distraction, like too much internet or too much television or anything, there can be so many different ways that we distract ourselves from our emotions. But I find that that is one of the things that people want to experience the least is the actual five to 30 second pain of, you know, feeling the hurt and then allowing it to pass through you. Because when you feel that pain, there's something really amazing that happens is that with your awareness of it, it it actually moves through you in such a way that it, it doesn't linger. Depression is really stuffed down anger and an anger that really wants to be mobilized through your body. And when you really allow yourself to feel these painful feelings, yeah, it's going to be kind of intense. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit painful at first. But eventually what happens over time is that there's a gradual reducing of it. And, you know, things like PTSD and and all of these side effects of repressing emotion they they just tend to go away when you actually witness the anger and they, you you stay with it and you don't abandon yourself and you don't run away from your emotions. So yeah, thanks, Dave. I can personally um, test the Katerina's progress in that because I know a couple of years ago or so when she used to come to me venting in a bad mood, she wouldn't just be in a bad mood; she'd be devastated. But now, after a lot of paradigm clearing, when she comes to me in a bad mood, she's just in a bad mood and it usually passes within about 10 or 15 minutes and then we're laughing laughing afterward but i remember the times when it was hours of crying so katarina right, can speak right. more to that than me so exactly um can i share something too uh, katarina um um this past week um having had this opportunity uh with katarina and also my other daughter uh francisca where I actually, instead of run away, uh, run, running away from reality or, you know, I really wanted truth this week. I really wanted to have a major transformation, and I just went all out. 
And so sitting down for two and a half hours and listening to Francisca in an open, honest way to have her kind of give me a report card of how I've done as a mom, uh, while I would never, ever, ever have brought that on myself, um, I actually went head, headstrong into it. And instead of it tumbling me into a major depression where I wouldn't maybe, you know, work for a month and I would just want to kill myself or, you know, like that kind of drama from that kind of reality, instead it was such an aha. And I totally had a different mindset of how I look at inconveniences now instead of major upsets in my life so that when you know my son blew in and had all this drama you know normally I would have been crying and all upset for like days and weeks and whatever and blaming everybody instead it was like wow not my problem you know like and I I it was if I allowed myself to feel his pain but I didn't embrace it as my own which was huge uh, for me, anyway, and um, and I think just that showed me that hey, I am getting worse. I am seeing that these things are important, but instead of running away from discomfort, like you say, to embrace it and feel those emotions, because then it's not that shoved child that you're putting away or the shoved emotions that you're putting away. You're allowing them to be part of you, and you're feeling like a whole person that can cry and they can have emotions, but when you stifle them, that's when they come out in all kinds of other weird places and ways. Thank you. Thank you for Thank sharing you for me. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm all, now that it's been prompted, I just, I have to share with you guys my experience of this whole transformation that I've been on over the past five years or so, because, you know, you guys are referencing it, so I have to fill everybody else in. Um, so I experienced a tremendous amount of grief and loss in my younger years, and among them being the loss of my health to anorexia, chronic fatigue, PCOS, fibromyalgia, and I had a chain of dysfunctional and toxic love relationships, and I just couldn't trust men. I was burnt out to my core, and I struggled for a few years to find the fix for all of my woes. And after therapy and Western and Eastern medicine couldn't fix me, I was pretty set on ending my life. I really just couldn't take the pain that I felt on the inside or the outside. And, you know, if it weren't for my friendships and some of the people that I've met along the way, I wouldn't be here with you today. And particularly through my friendship with uh, Dave Kelso, who's on the phone with me, he's been a really amazing support for me over the past couple of years. And, you know, through this, he and I actually have done a lot of paradigm clearing, which is like belief clearing. And, um, through that, that's another thing I'll be talking to you about in a minute, but he, I had a myriad of powerful experiences, and I really learned how to be patient with myself. You've, and over you've that helped, time, I healed my self-worth. Or you've helped me just as much as I've helped you. I just want to put that credit out there. Thank you. Well, he basically showed me all the places on the inside of myself where I bought into being a victim and how self-loathing and hatred really fed the, this underbelly, this fiery belly of low self-worth. And over that period of time, I grew in my confidence and through my many ups and downs, my life steadily improved and my health was improving. I was getting off of medicine. My health and vitality were coming back and my relationships were improving. And I actually even ended up marrying the love of my life. And I've been happily married now for almost a year. So I've continued to help others dissolve their own barriers to fulfillment. And, and that's what I'm here tonight helping you do too. Self-worth really is everything, you guys. And I hope, it, it is, it's my sincere hope that by the end of tonight, you will have a glimmer of how vitally important this is and how it really does deserve your intention and, and your, your diligent efforts towards improving it. Because it's not enough to just want to be self-confident. It's not enough to just say, yeah, it would be really great if I had X, Y, Z thing in my life. You know, this experience of self-worth, because it, it really is an experience, and uh, an experience that you live throughout your life, it's, it's this idea of really being able to tap into something that's greater than yourself and being able to see that greatness inside of you. And it's not an ego thing. It's not 
an I'm full of myself kind of thing. You know, some of the people who I've met who have had the greatest levels of self-worth were some of the most humble people I've ever met because really they have such a large level of self-respect and it's a healthy self-respect. It's this, this, this willingness to stand up for themselves because they understand that other people treat them in such a way that is reflective of how they treat themselves. And so when you really learn to understand these, these ideas about self-worth and how it really doesn't make you a selfish, vile, horrible person, you, your life will change fundamentally because no longer are you going to be taking crappy jobs that don't fulfill you and no longer are you going to be the doormat to your friends and family and no longer are you, you know, you're not going to have the frustrations that come with not having people value you. And for many of you, I know that, you know, the, the, the relationships with other people is a really big deal. You know, how you have business relationships, like you were saying, Perry, about really not knowing how to handle this whole uh, worth thing, you know, in business relationships and, and other things amongst that, because you haven't had clarity about your own self-worth. And so other people don't really know how to behave in relationship with you. So it is my sincere wish that you understand even a glimmer of what we're saying tonight and really carry it with you because it, it really does change everything. So, yeah. Um, before I go on, does anybody have any questions for me thus far? We're about an hour into this, so I just wanted to. Anybody? Uh, this is Mark again. Hi, Mark. I just had another thought that hasn't been mentioned yet. And I'm looking at this addiction to wanting to be happy and feeling like you're worth being happy and deserving of it. Uh, mm -hmm. So oftentimes I've noticed that the fast tracks to, be get, to get out of that sense of, of, of uh, narcissistic self-doubt or whatever is the notion of gratitude. And it, in that moment when you realize that this isn't your game and everything that you have is a gift and you, you know, even in the worst days, there's a reason for gratitude because those are the moments when you're when you're bummed out or there's something depressing you. There's a reason for that. Don't waste it. And so many mm -hmm. times, I mean, that's the problem with self-medication is that you, you numb yourself from all those moments when there was an opportunity to look at, well, what am I doing that maybe I can be cause of the matter of that's making me feel this way? When, in fact, if you're, if you're willing to just say, well, you know, there's something wrong here, but am I being grateful enough for what I do have instead of what I don't have? I mean, that's for me has been a, one of those moments. Sometimes it's really shocking to see it's just how far you lose sight of the fact that, you know, but you have this and you have this, and, and all of this is possible still. And what are you what are you griping about? What are you bummed out about? I mean, when there are people who have nothing and they're joyful, I mean, what is your problem? And it's just been one of those, those shocks that, that sometimes that, that recognition that it's beyond you. You're not such, you're not the be-all of your happiness. And that there's things that are being done for you that you have no appreciate, not near enough appreciation for the fact that you're not doing your own breathing, you're not doing your own blood circulating, blah blah blah. That all of that was, was you took for granted, and yet, in spite mm -hmm. of the tough day, you still, you still have a lot of opportunities that that you didn't deserve or earn or, or you know whatever. They were just a gift, and your life is here to be used and, and to be joyful about it. And that for me sometimes makes me much more humble to the fact that this is quite like I wanted it to be, but then again, who said it would be? And what makes me think that even as worthy as I am, that I deserve everything I want? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting perspective. Thank you for sharing. This whole concept is really about honoring who you are and really knowing down to your toes that it's okay to be who you are. And it's really all about peeling back all of these layers of guilt, shame, recrimination and doubt that have kept you apart from living the way that you really want. And it doesn't matter where these ideas came from, you know, all of this guilt, the recrimination and doubt, like all of that 
it really doesn't matter if it came from childhood or if it came from your present experiences. The point is, is that it's here right now and that you're all here for a reason. And this is the stuff that you're showing up with, which is fine. So I know that you're really looking for more of a fully expressed and fully empowered and confident and radiant and electric life. And you know that when you don't know your own value, you'll settle for an existence that's mediocre at best. Is that right? And you'll accept the messages that the world has for you as the norm. And you're not going to question what you're ingesting. And your life will be the same old, same old. And I know that you want more than that. And that's why you're here listening. So I really want to thank you for being here. I know you're already on the path. And you just may be coming up against some of your own roadblocks. So I want you all now to either write this down on a piece of paper. We're going to do a little exercise. Write this down on a piece of paper or just keep the thought in your mind. What would you be doing right now if you didn't doubt that you could? And we're going to go around the circle and I'm going to ask all of you. So anybody want to go first? I know we can't see each other, but you can start fix yourself. Who's there? Okay, Who? fine. I'll be the the ballsy son of a gun that goes goes first when nobody else is going. Um, you know, part of my my main like. Part of what I do for a living and making money and all that is multimedia content. You know, I have a YouTube channel, PSEC documentary and all that. And, like, there's a big part of me that always says, you know, it should be better than what it is. I should be making more by now that I should have done better and that Mm -hmm. I should be farther along than I am. And that's when I have to stop and look back at all the things I have accomplished and realize that anything worth doing takes time. And people tend to plant a tree seed today and expect a 40-foot tree tomorrow, which is incredibly preposterous. Hey, Dave. Dave. Yeah. What's up? I'm going to stop you right there for a second because this is um, – I want you to keep on track with just – thinking about what it is that you would do if you didn't doubt yourself. Just leave it at that, just potent, one sentence. What is it that you would be doing right now if you didn't doubt yourself, if you didn't doubt that you could? I don't want you to go into the story. I want you to just tell me that right there. Being farther along with this faster than I believe is possible, more progress in a shorter amount of time than I currently believe is possible. So give me give me an actual fact or a figure, like how many subscribers, how many video views, what kinds of people would you want on your show? Give me the tangibles rather than the I wish I would be farther along. Like with, with, not with, with a, a year a year from now, let's say twenty thousand YouTube subscribers, fifteen million views, and you know more really inspiring people, you know, participating on Google Hangouts and, and, you know, the interviews and stuff that I do. I mean, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm really thankful for people like, you know, like you, Kristen, but, you know. Again, I I don't want you to go into the ego, like, justifications. I would like you to stay on the path of what do you want? What if you weren't doubting yourself? So that's great. I really like the fact that you were able to name the thing that you are doubting that you can do. Perfect. Thank um, you. Katarina? Yeah. Um, why, don't I, why don't I try it? I shot at this. Um, okay. Uh, what would I do different? And what, how would my life look? Um, first of well, all, actually, it's more so what would you do, be doing right now if you didn't doubt that you could? Um. I didn't doubt that I could. I think I'm missing the key here of the could what. Like, I guess I'm missing, like, what, 
Well, I guess I need more clarity for the question. If you didn't doubt that you could do the thing that you're wanting to do, what would you be doing right now if you didn't doubt that you could? Oh, my goodness. Um, I didn't doubt that I could. Right. If you um, did, I think if I would that was totally, totally erased. Um, pardon? If that was totally erased, the whole concept of doubt was completely gone from your mind, what would you be doing right now if you could? If you if you did not doubt that you could, um, I would be preparing to be going to the conference um, with bells on. I would the dress that I've got hanging there that I don't quite fit yet. I would know that I fit it, and I would be fitting anything that I could walk into my closet and grab off the closet shelf. Okay, um, so perfect. You would be fitting into this dress and having, I'm assuming, a successful business as well. Yes, 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 yes. Um, okay, very perfect. successful, um, of being able to feel that I am that transformation and I am that um, inspiration that I started on my journey 13 years ago wanting to be. Perfect. Okay, thank you. So being in Next. integrity with myself. Okay, perfect. Next person? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anybody else want to go? Okay, this is Chris. Oh, Chris? Okay. Uh, a couple of you know that I like to exercise in the swimming pool, mm-hmm. and, and we're having uh, a freeze tonight, so I didn't go to the pool today, and I'm not probably going tomorrow. And there, But there's something that tells me I can't do indoor yoga gently in my little apartment. Mm-hmm. I would be probably doing. No, I mean I'm really I want to be on this call, so right now I'm doing what I want to do. But either when we're done or tomorrow morning, I would like not to think. Oh, I can't do the yoga. It's physically too hard for me. Hmm. Interesting. So are you going to do the yoga uh, anyway? Well, um, am I? Yeah, are you? Are you going to challenge that doubt? Okay, I will. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, Leanne? Uh, yeah, that was just absolutely just sparked something for me. I joined a membership. And mm-hmm. I had never been yet, and that was, like, probably three weeks ago. And I've always had some excuse of not going. And if I didn't doubt that I would be embarrassed to be getting into a leotard or whatever to be able to, you know, just to go and to be okay with my body all the way around, um, I would be there. And so this has sparked me to uh, know that that's something this week that I'm going to be doing, is I'm going to be going and doing what I really wanted to do, um, and that is going to the gym. Can I give you a little extra piece of, uh, of help and advice right there? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. So when you're going to the gym, because I, I remember I struggled with the same feeling and the same adversity in my own self, I remember that what helped me get over the initial fear of going is um, I remember going to gyms and actually working myself out to a pulp, basically, I would, would hurt myself because I would be overextending myself thinking, you know, no pain, no gain, right? right. And the, the biggest fundamental shift for me was gentleness and consistency. So you don't want to work yourself out to the point where you're, you're sweating buckets and your heart rate is through the roof and you just can't move your legs. You know, it's gentleness because the potency of movement is really all about the consistency and it's all about the the intention and the emotion that you have behind the exercise. So that's why things like yoga, like Chris was talking about, are really effective uh-huh. because right. it generates that, that equanimity in your mind and, and it's really a peaceful movement that still is very efficacious for your body. Right. So, so, yeah, um, I know that... that- I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, one thing, though, that I've noticed is that when um, now with this new awareness of 
you know, I wouldn't do that to my kids if I was taking them to the gym. And, right. <laughs> um, and so because I now <clears throat> look at this new self as being this part that I want to nurture because I did it for my children and I'll do it for everybody else, but I never did it for myself. Well, mm-hmm. now I would know that I would not go and tell myself or want to be sore or whatever because I would never have done that to my children when, like you and I first went to the gym. And so mm-hmm. it would be listening to my body, being gentle, and knowing that I have a very cheap membership to I uh, just go and find the consistency of going through the movement of knowing that I'm not afraid to go and getting right. over that hurdle of whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is. The fact is it's real, it's there, and I'm not doing it. You know, right. whether it's not picking up the phone and making phone calls or whether it's not going to the gym, to get over that and break that, that's what you've been doing for me. So thank you. Perfect. All right. Uh, Paul, I know that you said that you wanted to go. All right, I'm unmuted now. If I had complete faith that I could do it, I would be seeking out a speaker's agency so that I could get in front of larger groups with my message, which is very good. And I would be intentionally seeking out radio and television interviews to tell my story. Perfect. Hey, uh, Paul. Paul, this is Dave. The, yes, ra- the radio interviews thing, I can help you get that at the mm-hmm. Katarina. She knows. I help her get mm. it. So I can help you as well. Talk to me about it one of these days. Yeah, I, absolutely, I will. Thank you, Dave. Yep. Perfect, guys. Awesome. All right. Who else would want to share what they would do if they didn't doubt that they could? Hello? Hello? Hi. Is that you, Perry? Okay, I guess everybody's fine. If nobody else is going to go, um, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, one thing that came to mind just now is the idea that um, I would be bringing my husband home from Saudi Arabia because I would have gotten myself out of debt. Um, by sitting there and using some of the tools that Paul taught me. So, I mean, I think uh, I know that that's a direction that I'm just moving very rapidly in. And for the first time in I don't know how many years, um, this first month, I actually have money at the end of the month, which I have never had before. And so um, if I knew that I could do it, I would be bringing my husband home and uh, knowing that he could get a job and that we would make it. And that would be big and huge for our family. Perfect. Perfect. That's really wonderful. Okay, so I have one more exercise for you all, and then we're going to get into a bit of the belief stuff that I was just talking about. So the next exercise that I have for you is to to really think about what the kind of life that you would love to be living, like your your, your the scenario in your head that you know, the one that you really imagine and everything was all hunky-dory and unicorns and rainbows and butterflies, you know, you would have that going on in your head. Think about that one. Just take a minute to really formulate what that looks like for you. You don't need to share it or anything. You just need to see it in your own mind, in your mind's eye, rather. And then ask yourself, will my current level of self-worth get me there? And if no, what is one small step I could take today to experience greater self-worth? You know, it could be moving, taking some time to move yourself, to, to really honor yourself by eating maybe a fruit something nutritious, something that has some energy to it. 
maybe it's going to bed a little bit earlier. I know that this is a phone call that's going to go a little later, but taking that time for yourself, maybe taking 10 minutes, 15 minutes, meditating and just really honoring the spaciousness of what's going on inside of you tonight as we really delve down into this conversation of self-worth. I want you to really feel what that idea of taking that one small step forward brings up in you. Does it make you a little bit fearful? Does it make you feel at ease? Does it make you feel a little excited because you know that it will be taking you in a direction that you want to go? You know, you could also be thinking about action steps that you want to take tomorrow. You know, the things that you want to go out into the world and do. You know, for me, one of my steps today was actually just getting on this call. Oh. It's scary, you know, getting on a phone call and having all these people listening to me. My patterns have been that, you know, I don't do that. You know, that's so outside of my paradigm. And when you feel the fear and you do it anyway. And I feel amazing for doing it. So I want that same thing for you. I want you to be able to experience what it feels like to move out of your comfort zone enough to really be able to experience life in a different way and experience life in this way that feels expansive and like you can really move around and you have room to be yourself and you're not trying to shove yourself off into a corner and and to not – to do things in a way that you don't feel like you're offending everyone or, you know, you having to please everyone. There, there is a different way of being. And that's what I'm trying to show you is that when you live from the space of worthiness, all of your actions and all of the things that you do really have a rightness about them. And then you decriminalize yourself you know, there's all this talk about decriminalizing marijuana. Decriminalize yourself. Hey, Katerina. Yes? As a public speaker myself, and a rather long-winded one, I just want to admit that every time I I speak, I am always absolutely afraid that I'm just going to make a total ass of myself, that everything is going to go wrong, the sky is going to fall, and the world is going to end. But I'm just like, you know what? I'm already used to feeling that way, so I ask myself another what if. <laughs> What if I have a really good time? What if it actually is awesome? Who cares if 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 I I make a jerk of myself or it fails or whatever? I'm used to my whole life of feeling like that. That's not new. I'm used to that. I can deal with that. So I shift to what about the new? What about having a good time and things going great? You know that could happen too. That is a valid what if. So I put that I put that in my mind every time I speak because I'm always afraid of making a jerk of myself when I speak. It might look like I'm not, but I am. <laughs> An interesting perspective, Dave. All right. So does everybody have their their image in their mind of what their story, how they would like their life to go? And just out of curiosity, how many of you, all you need to do is just say, I, how many of you think that your current level of self-worth is going to get you there? Nope. Cricket. <laughs> and I'm unmuted, but I'm not saying anything. <laughs> but I know that after tonight's call, uh, my game plan for this week, um, and that's pretty exciting, and that is to go and make an appointment with my um, – parish uh, priest, uh, we've got a new parish priest, and uh, tell him my miracles and my conversion story, uh, because somebody told me that he's been looking for speakers, and whether he Perfect. wants me or not, I just know that I am it's been 25 years and long overdue, and people have prompted me a gazillion times, you know, atheism to Roman Catholic and five kids, and yeah, it's quite the story, nine miracles in one week, it's been pretty crazy. Um, but I meant to go do it, and I am going to make an appointment this week. Dave leaves on Tuesday, and I'm going to do it and just see where that goes. Perfect. That's so perfect. That's really outside my comfort level. 
Well, it's kind of exciting to do things that move out, move you outside of your comfort zone because, you know, you're in that unknown territory of not really knowing how it's all going to pan out. But when you jump in, you know, there, there's – there's such a magic to it because all of your deep seated, horrible beliefs that just feel so yucky, they all bubble up to the surface for you to look at. And so that, that moves us into what I was going to talk about next is I'm actually putting together a, well, I've already done it. I've, I've sent out a survey a couple of days ago to a lot of you and I actually pulled a lot of you about, what your areas of self-worth struggles have been. And in the local Austin area, I'm actually contacting many spiritual centers and I'm talking to a lot of them about putting together a class for them locally. And I really wanted to have a class digitally too because I think that this is a topic that really needs to be further expounded upon in, in a very targeted way for all of these different key areas of our lives you know, the relationships, the traumas, the money issues, the, the body image issues, all of these things really rule our lives and make, it, make us feel inadequate in some way so that when we go forward and we move forward into the world, like all of these things come up and almost paralyze us, right? So I wanted to let everybody know about that, that that course is coming up and that that's going to be starting uh, in March. So if you want to be a part of that, just get with me after this call and send me a message on Facebook and we'll talk about that. But um, anyways, I want you all to, over the next couple of days also, really pay attention to the triggers that come up for you and notice what happens to you in those moments of feeling these moments of low self-worth. Like, was it something somebody said Was it something that somebody did towards you that made you feel like perhaps they were perceiving you in such a way and you went to a bit of a shame storm? I want you to pay attention to those moments and really notice what's happening inside of you. Was it the emotion? Was it the the thought, the belief? And just witness it. Just pay attention to it and let it move through you. Whatever wants to unfold, the emotions, the the thoughts, the belief structures, just pay attention to them because they are going to be teaching you something really important that you need to see. And I can't tell you what that is because I'm not in your head and I don't know what that is for you specifically, but I want you to be aware of those things. So thank you, everybody. This has been a really, really great call, and I just want to have now a closing meditation with all of you, and then after that, we can open it up to some more question and answer, and if people need to go, they can go. And All right, so close your eyes again, and sit down in your seat, and really kind of get comfy and cozy, and, and feel what it likes to what it feels like to settle down into yourself and not be so focused on the outside world. I mean, there might be messages coming up on your phone or the idea of wanting to check your Facebook while you're listening. Just remove all distractions and really, really pay attention to what's going on on the inside of you right now. If you feel a little bit elated, maybe some warmth going on, I know I do talking for an hour straight will do that to you, right? Feel your feet on the floor. Really feel your hands in your lap and feel what it feels like to hold your phone right now. Notice your breathing. Notice the thoughts that are running through your mind. Notice the sounds around you. Notice the air on your skin the temperature of the air. Notice your breathing in and out of your nose, the sound it makes as you exhale. And then the lines around your eyes, your jaw, let it hang. Relax the 
skin around your nose and your eyebrow. Allow it to just fall flat on your face. Allow yourself to melt here in this moment. Just the peace of what's going on for you right now. Be okay with the distraction. Be okay with things that are happening around you. Place your hand on your heart and feel right there. There's a palpable energy that comes from our hearts and goes out into the world around us. And when we can feel that energy for ourselves, you know, holding our hand on our heart and feeling the heart beat, we can really have a sense of compassion, understanding for ourselves and where we're at in this moment in time. I want you all to acknowledge all of the efforts that you've made in being here tonight and all of the effort that you've made in your life leading up to this point. Just trying to find a way to be okay with yourself. And I want you to know from the depth of my heart that I believe that it is truly okay for you to be you. And that deep down, Deep down in your core, there's really nothing wrong with you. I want you to understand what a revelation that is. To know that the things that you've been telling yourself are lies. The things that you do to keep yourself apart from yourself, apart from other people, are lies. And rest in the freedom in that. Rest in the knowingness that you, you are worthy and beautiful and amazing. It doesn't matter what you've done in this life. It doesn't matter what you think about yourself right now because thoughts are fleeting and transitory. It doesn't matter what ideas you've gotten from other people about who you are. All that matters is that what's on the inside of you is radiant and brilliant. And when you can learn to understand that truth inside of you, and you can learn to live that truth, you can learn to be that truth. And it's the most divine, pure expression of love you've ever known. And that, my friends, is worthiness. So now bring your attention back to your feet. Feel the weightiness of them, tingling perhaps. Feel liquid light moving up your leg, moving up your legs, your shins. To your, to your knees, your thighs, your hips, filling up your abdomen, up your arms, to your heart, and from your heart to your throat, energizing clear communication, clear, worthy communication, communication that comes from your heart. Allow this light to come up to your head. Fill your mind with the knowingness, the knowingness of your worthiness. And allow this light to come out five feet around you. Fill up this room with the essence of you. Go out past the room that you're in, out past the state you're in, out past the country that you're in, and allow yourself to go up 300 feet to the sky. 
and just feel this expansiveness, this pure, humble, beautiful expansiveness. And this is pure worthiness. There's no vanity. There's no selfishness. It's pure and it's true. And from this space of total expansion, you can walk around in your life. You can know that it's all okay. You can know that everything that you're going through right now, you can be bigger than it because that is the essence of worthiness. Breathe a couple deep breaths for a moment and just breathe that in. And open your eyes and gain awareness of the room that you're in. I have about 10 more minutes, and if any of you have any questions or any comments, I'm opening the line to you now. If any of you would like to share experience, what that was like for you, what you got out of this call, I'd love to hear it. Um, this is Leanne, mm-hmm. and um, it's really funny because I feel like crying. And I thought, wow, that's an interesting reaction. And it's kind of like my little child is telling me, like, wow, you're finally getting it. You're putting the pieces together, and it's almost tears to joy. But there's just kind of like this wanting to kind of release and to just go, Wow. And so it's interesting that it's, a, um, I feel like I want to cry because I'm just so grateful. And, and the attitude of gratitude is, uh, is just overwhelming me right now. And I just want to say thank you to all of you for sharing. Um, I just got so much from other people's stories and um, how, um, self, you know, where it looks for them. And I just want to say thank you to all of you. It, it was just very gratifying and well worth my time. And thank you for you know, reminding us to, you know, hey, this is not the time to be looking at that or looking at this, but just focusing. And I did that, and I'm really trying to do that when I'm, you know, listening out of my children and things like that and just totally being present, and so thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, this is Chris. The gratitude is what welled up in me as well, and thank you so much, Katerina, for doing this and Paul and everybody. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for coming. Sure. The way that I felt during that meditation was extremely expansive as as if every care that I had in the world was just evaporating, as if I was so much bigger than them and that I was much more equipped to handle the the uncertainties of life. And I felt amazing. You know, thank you so much, Katharina. I know the work that you do is fantastic, and to be able to really experience you, you know, I know that I always leave the room whenever you're doing a session out of respect for your clients, but let me tell you, you what you do is very powerful. Thanks, Paul. It's not even yeah. half of it here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Someone that's trying to come on next? Anybody else? Well, I know that this whole experience has been giving, shall we say, the old paradigm portions of my ego a great big giant 
kick in the butt because when I see how beautiful the job you've been doing and have done today and all of your shifts and everybody gathered here today and what everybody's saying, it's like, I know that if I had listened to society and shut my mouth and never said anything to you years ago and just shirked away that, you know, I then couldn't have been the match to light the fuse that ended up with the explosion of what's here today. And I don't mean that in like a narcissistic or a vain way, like, oh, Katarina got here because of me. Da, da, da. I don't mean it that way. I mean the idea that all of us as equal human beings have this equal power to do it. You only need to, to, a spark to get the fire going. And we're taught, oh, I'm just poor little insignificant me. I can't make a difference unless I have millions of dollars and 10 PhDs and high society friends and I'm cool with the in crowd or, or I'm a major athlete or a programmer, this or that or whatever. Our heads are, are filled with crap about everything we think we need, all this overwhelming stuff to make a difference when it just takes the slightest little nudge from anybody to start this, this the profound domino effect that ends up culminating in, in, in things like this. And it's just really just, you know, kicks the, the ego in the pants. Because the ego wants to say, oh, no, I'm feeling justified in my victimization. I'm right. Everybody else is wrong. So I'm right about about not being worthy. And I'm right about the fact that I can't do anything or make any difference. And you can't tell me otherwise. So shut up, you know. So it's like part mm -hmm. of my ego is like looking at that, like being like, ah, oh, snap. I was just called on my crap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Gabe, this is Katarina's mom, and there is no doubt in my mind the role that you have played in my daughter's healing, and that is this huge area of gratitude that I have. You know, wanting to publicly thank you for being her friend um, and enduring any any negativity that that may have caused over the years uh, from you know, other sources or whatever, but I just want to say thank you and look what, what is created from that spark. So thank you, Dave. You're quite welcome, and I, I do appreciate that because I'm definitely still in the process of getting used to being thanked for such things. I've mostly lived a life of people telling me how worthless I am and stupid and how I'm not doing anything right and how I'm not going to amount to anything and what a dumb shit I am and whatever else. And, you know, only within the last few years has this, you know, Dave, you're awesome. Thank you for doing this, so on and so forth. I feel like a chick being given a compliment. I can, like, directly <laughs> relate to that now. And, like, how the chick's looking like, like, whoa, I'm totally not used to this, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know Perry was saying something about that, too. So I'm, still on the call, but. I'm still getting used to it, but at this point, mm -hmm. I've learned to not reject it. I've learned to not look at it and think like, "Oh yeah, right." You know, it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm so used to being shunned. You know, is is this compliment real? Or as soon as mm -hmm. I accept the compliment, are they going to laugh at me and be like, "Ha ha, you're so gullible. You thought I was really complimenting you. See, you're such a loser." You know. So it's like I, I've been having to really get used to this whole like genuine compliments and recognition thing because for the vast majority of my life that's not been something I've been used to. No, that was genuine. Yeah, I, I know, I know. <laughs> I also used to be extremely overweight. When I lost like over 70 pounds, I, and I, I used to have like a beach ball stomach. I, I'd laugh and, and was joking to everybody like, hey, I finally had the kid, you know, because like this big beach mm -hmm. ball stomach was gone. So it's like, I, before that, I was used to a reality where I'd be lucky if, like, you know, chicks even wanted to talk to me at all, you know, much less be my friend, much less, you know, now it's like, 
olive girls, you know, saying like, oh, Dave, you're so attractive, you're so hot, and so on. And I'm not like, you know, saying that as a form of beefing myself up. I'm saying that as a form of, I'm not used to that. i got to do a double take. Like, are you talking to the person behind me? Um, you're talking to me, right? Like, but that's impossible because no one ever tells me that. You know, right. everybody always avoids me like I've got the black death. And it's like, you're telling me this, really? So, you know, it's I've had to really adjust and it's it's challenged my paradigms because mostly I've been just used to, oh, Dave, you suck, you're, you're stupid. And it's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, so a real mind trip. <laughs> Perfect. How about Perry or Betty or Mark? Anybody else have anything else to say? Okay, perfect. Well, I just want to let you all know thank you so much for coming and thank you for helping me. And this has been really, really wonderful, getting my feet wet and trying on my role as a facilitator for a larger group like this. This is really cool. So the class that I was talking about, uh, you can actually find it on my website at www.katerinaedwards.com forward slash class. So if you have any interest in partaking in that four-week class with me, you can definitely go sign up there. And uh, there's actually an early bird discount that ends on March 1st. So if you want to get in before March 1st, uh, there's a generous discount available to you. And uh, after that, it'll start around uh, March 9th, depending on scheduling for people. So... Anyway, everybody, I'm so grateful for this call. This has been so fun. And even though I know it's kind of stirring up stuff for people, it's it's really exciting, isn't it, to just move forward and to really feel these real feelings of self-worth that are just so awesome when you really actually allow yourself to feel them. So if anybody doesn't have anything else to say, I'm going to let you all go. And really enjoy your evening and keep in mind some of the exercises that we discussed tonight because it would be really interesting to see what that does for you. Okay, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, Thanks, everybody, for sharing. <laughs> Good night, Leanne. I need to go get a Kleenex now. <laughs> <laughs> I just use toilet paper. It's cheaper. (laughs) (laughs) It doesn't have the lotion on it like pus do. Mm. I'm spoiled. (laughs) (laughs) Good night, everybody. Good night, Leanne. Good night, Dave. You truly are. Good night. Good night. Good night, all.